me personally, when I go out to say a, a park that I haven't been to before, it's like I feel like Magellan. I feel like I am exploring that place for the first time ever. Um, with this tool, it just brings out that explorer that I go and I flip over a log and I genuinely don't know what I'm going to see. And with iNaturalist, I can take an image of it, I can observe it, and I learn the name of, of that thing. And I also, I show that data point of where this thing is in place and in time. Uh, so it's, it's pretty cool. My name is Sam Kieschnick. Um, I go by Sam Biology on iNaturalist, and I work for Texas Parks and Wildlife. I am a urban wildlife biologist. So as an urban wildlife biologist, I get to work with the public. Um, I get to work with people and how people interact with nature and how nature interacts with people. So I use iNaturalist for a couple reasons. Um, I use iNaturalist, uh, first of all, personally. I just enjoy it. Uh, it's this tool that helps me see nature. And I, I, get to, I get to see more of nature than I would without it. So with this tool, I'll go outside and I'll explore and I'll, I'll get to see small things that maybe I didn't notice before. So this tool really, really helps me. Um, I also use it professionally. Um, I use it to uh, work with municipalities, with city councils, with park boards, with uh, city planners, and we get to um, show the different organisms that are found in the public areas. Uh, it's a great way that the public can interact with nature and also show the municipalities, the policy makers, that, that yes, there are critters out here and we enjoy them. But what's really fun when I'm, when I'm out with people showing them how to use iNaturalist, we typically go on a little nature walk. And, and when we, we see things that maybe they've seen all the time, like let's say a small plant, um, and we learn their name, they'll go, wow, I've seen that in these other places, but I never really knew what it was. So with iNaturalist, it's kind of that first step of appreciating nature is by learning the names of these things. So that's one of the ways when I'm out uh, engaging people with iNaturalist or just engaging people with nature and I show them this tool, it's a great way that they can engage uh, with, with nature. It's not just an app, um, it is a network. It's a community, it's a database, uh, but it's all these things mixed together and it just creates this, this beautiful product um, this tool that we use that engages us outside. Every time I make an observation, every time I go out, uh, I, I'll see something that I didn't know before. I mean, every single time I use this tool, I learn something that I didn't know before, every single time. Um, and I've been using it for every day for a while. And, um, and I, I will learn a lot every single day. And the neat thing about this tool is you take it with you. Um, as I came out here to visit California, uh, everything is new. And I, I can associate it to things that I see at home in Texas, but they're different. So with this tool, it allows me to learn about my new space, my new place that I come to adventure to or, or to check out. I, I find the most beauty in the small. So I, I, I tell folks, you don't have to go to the Serengeti to go on a safari. Just get on your hands and knees and you change your perspective. So even a little vacant lot or an unmowed area, if you change your perspective a little bit, you can see magnificence in the small. So there are some small flowers that are itty bitty tiny things, but when you change your perspective, when you look at them closer, you can see magnificence, just beauty in some of that small stuff. The urban environment is kind of like its own ecosystem. You know, you have the tundra, you have the desert, you have the rainforest, but we have this, this new ecosystem, the urban ecosystem. And there are still organisms that live well with us. There are some that do great with us. Some of them don't do so well with us, but as, as we learn about the critters in the urban ecosystem, uh, it, it helps us find a way to live with them. Uh, and that's, that's a powerful thing. One of the things that we're experiencing in the urban environment is the, the new species that just show up from some other place. They either hop on our backs or they get in our trucks or they find their way into our flower pots. And the next thing you know, this species is out and about. And as urban biologists, we as, as wildlife biologists, we are seeing some of these new species. Now, are they invasive? Are they just non-native? That's gonna be a, a, a fun a, a question to address. Uh, but that's a way that, that we can use it as, as research as well. So I think it's especially important that the public goes out to observe things in the urban environment. Um, and not just shows 
policymakers that yes, diversity does exist here, but just as important, it shows that there is a constituency, that there is a group of naturalists that want to go out and seek that biodiversity. So if a, if a public land can be maintained to where there is biodiversity here, this constituency of naturalists, current naturalists and also future naturalists, uh, can go to that park to experience biodiversity. There's several parks that I can think of, uh, some nature parks, but also recreational parks, that when city council looks at, at, at the critters that are found there and sees the naturalist community that looks at those and cares of those, um, it does affect that maintenance. Um, so they allow wildlife habitats uh, to be maintained there uh, for the wildlife, but also for the naturalists that appreciate the wildlife. In Dallas-Fort Worth, one of the things I like to ask people is about horned lizards, um, these Texas horned lizards. They're still found west of, west of Fort Worth, west of um, the Metroplex, but when I talk to people, they remember um, seeing them as kids. And I almost don't believe them because I have looked for these things. I've looked for these things in the Metroplex, and they're no longer there. So by using iNaturalist, it tells us what's here today. It gives us this data point of where this thing is in time and in space. And I, I wonder for future generations, what's gonna be my horned lizard? Is it gonna be the migrating monarch that the kids will tell me, Grandpa, you didn't see butterflies move around. You didn't see that migration of monarchs or whatever critter it may be. But with iNaturalist, we're accumulating this data that we can uh, compare to the next generation of, of observations. And the observations of today are useful to compare it with the observations of tomorrow and the next day and years down the road.